Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of Knowing Service Now. My name is Neil Laufenberg, and for this episode, I will be covering some incident entry tips and tricks, things that you can use on the incident form to make your incident entry quicker, easier, and more likely to uh, assist the end user. So to start off with, once again, we'll go into an incident. And for this demo, I'm going to create a new incident. Uh, as you'll note on the incident, there are a number of fields here for you to fill in about the incident. Uh, when you're filling out an incident that's coming from a caller, the most likely thing is to pick who that caller is. And you'll note one of the things that happens when you fill in the caller out of box is that his location is filled in, or sorry, the location is filled in based on the caller's location, which is a very nice feature so you know where that user is. Another thing that happens is next to the caller, there's a new button that gets added here called Show Related Incidents. And you can click on that button and in a new tab, it will open up all of the incidents that that caller has had in the system. Also can be very useful if they're having recurring issues. From there, one of the things you definitely want to do if possible is fill in a configuration item. And I have one here that I've selected that I'm going to fill in. And then you'll note again that there are a few extra buttons that come up on that configuration item. Uh, the first one is show CI map, which will show related business service information about that item. So you'll note that the item we selected is highlighted here, and you can see information about that configuration item and where it exists in the environment. Very useful for troubleshooting if you're trying to figure out downstream issues or related problems. You'll note there are some highlights on here about affected CIs and related issues. You can see those down, downstream and upstream, also very useful. We'll get into this, uh, this view a little bit more in a later episode, but I just wanted to show that this is available on an incident for your use. From there, you'll note that you can set impact and urgency, and let me just change this to high on both counts for right now. You'll note that there is a, a script here that runs that sets the priority to critical. So there is a mapping that changes these based on ITIL best practice to match the priority based on impact and urgency. I will include a URL uh, in the comments or in, in my uh, details section of this video for your use that points directly on the wiki to how that computation is done inside the system. So you have that. Uh, next, you're going to want to give it a short description. And one of the things that you'll note that's not immediately apparent is once I save this, based on the categorization you select, an assignment group will be, it will be automatically populated. Another very useful feature for getting tickets to the right place. Now this can be overridden after it's been set by the system, but it is a very nice feature for getting tickets out to uh, the correct people. I'll set a subcategory on that, no change there. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is next to the short description there are two buttons. The first is a suggestion button. This can be used to set short descriptions very quickly. It's useful for consistent short description setting. Um, I don't personally use this very often in our organization, but it could be very useful for a help desk where you have a lot of common issues coming up and it gives you a way to report on those in a common way as well beyond just category and subcategory. The other feature is the little book icon, which is search knowledge. Now, clicking search knowledge will populate the short description value into the search text for knowledge and will show you related knowledge. Now, I've used login issue here, and that comes up with this knowledge called Starmosh login. And I can click on that knowledge article, and it'll give me details about that knowledge article. Um, it'll allow you to say how useful it was, if it was helpful. You can flag it for follow-up. You can also comment on it right here. You can also see other uh, related tasks that have used this, in this case, another incident that I created earlier. One thing that is also very useful is you can attach this incident to, or excuse me, this knowledge to this incident. And it'll copy in the body text of that knowledge into the commentary, and it'll put it in code so you can see every time that it gets this gets used on other knowledge. So also a very useful feature. I'm going to save that. And you'll see it puts commentary in here, but again, if we go back to that knowledge article, you can see all the places it's been used. Very useful for tracking where knowledge is getting used in the environment. Beyond that, I think we've covered a lot of the basics around the incident form. Um, SLAs as they exist out of box are available on the bottom. You can relate it to problem records, change, re change requests, and caused by changes right here. It'll show the attached knowledge in the attached knowledge section. We talked earlier about watch list and work, work notes list. 
work, work notes list items are shown only internally or only to, to ticket worker ITIL type people. Watch list or details that go back to the end user. The last thing to really talk about on an incident is once you've resolved that incident, how do you close it? Well, simple enough, you can click resolve incident here up top. And that will put it into a resolved state. Now, depending on how, oh, excuse me, so you have to fill in closing notes once you've hit resolve on it. Good, good note here. So, issue was resolved by knowledge. All right, so we'll hit resolve again to finish that. Oh, and I forgot the close code, sorry. And we'll give it a close code, solve permanently, resolve. All right, so I'm going to go back to that incident real quick and just show you something about it. Now, this is set to resolved status. You'll note that it's not set instantly to closed status. There is an out of the rule processing engine that looks for resolved tickets and, and gives them a period of time before they are automatically closed by the system. Now, the, the reason for that is it allows the end user to respond to their email that comes out of the system and acknowledge whether or not that issue was closed. Or in this case, they can choose to say this closed was solved my issue or they can choose to ignore it, or they can click a link in that email that says this did not resolve my issue, and that will put it back into an active status. Now that is all configurable uh, as far as the time frames and how that functions, but it's important to note that the system out of box will not automatically close incidents. It closes them a number of days after the end user has had a chance to respond to them. All right. Once again, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please let me know. Please give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Feel free to subscribe to this video. Uh, sorry, subscribe to my channel. And uh, give me any ideas for other content that you might like some, uh, some tips and tricks on. Thanks. And again, this is Neil Laufenberg and Knowing Service Now.